so pretty today we are going to do Sunday chat which we do every second weekend for those of you that are new, um, as I said my name is Rhonda and I actually have a soap and business in Australia uh, and we sell wholesale retail and of course on here I try and give you some tips and some tricks that I have learned along the way which it takes such a long time to learn this business let me be honest and tell you that and I always uh do, you know try and be you know as clear and precise as I can to kind of guide you a little bit but take all that with your will and I always say you must do your due diligence um as we go along but today going to be more about a Q&A because um, this week I've been sent a number of questions I've been about 20 questions so I thought we'll go through the list and I'll start to answer um, like I said all of these Q&A questions so we'll be talking about um, packaging we'll be talking about getting a shop um, the processes also um, you know what sells what doesn't um, the, you know tips that I've learned along the way to be successful which there's lots of little tips that definitely um, I have learned as we go along. And I'm sorry if I flick it off, but I will flick off all of the, um, you know, little bits of information that I get. So let's start at the start. As most of you know, this week I have actually had some packaging made. So um, in regards to that, I thought we might as well just start with that and the process that it actually took me to get from, you know, so I'll show you this. So this is what I usually do, which is my normal packaging. And I just stick the labels onto a white box, which it does look really nice, but it's not that massively, um, you know, if you want to sell to a boutique, they probably don't want that. They're going to want professional packaging. Um, you know, these are all also ones that I've done myself, which I do love them and they're definitely shelf worthy, but they are just not to the level of, you know, a boutique if you're trying to um, upsell to more of a luxury brand. So I forgot to grab it, but I'll just show you the one that I've just done. So this is um, the one that I just finished doing uh, and making and I did show this on Instagram but this is my professional um, packaging which I had made from a US company. Uh, so uh, there's nothing really in Australia. Oh, good evening my darling. Welcome my love. Uh, I hope that you're having an amazing day. It is Sunday here in Australia at just before 11 o'clock and I'm a bit early I know. But anyway, so the professional packaging. So basically what I had to do and it took me a year to get that um, and it wasn't their fault. It was mine because I couldn't decide. But basically I designed it all on Canva. Then I basically went to find printers um, and I had a couple people suggesting some. I actually went with one that I found on Instagram that was very, very good. Oh, you're at the Collingwood Market, my love. No problem. I will see you uh, anytime. You can watch me anytime backwards, Carly and Hunter. That's no problem at all. Oh, hi, Chris. How are you, my love? Yes, you did catch my live and we're going to talk a little bit about many different things today but at the moment we're talking about packaging so yeah so like I said I designed it on Canva I, I realized the size that I wanted so I measured up you know the bottom of the jar added on a mill on either side and then that's how I knew the size that I wanted and also um, I wanted mine to be a exact size so I only wanted it 22 centimeters high because when you get the ones that are already white boxes they're like 30 centimeters high they're so big that basically it's like hollow at the top so they're more they can crush much more easier so that's why I actually didn't want um, them to be super tall and I wanted them smaller so they could fit into the boxes better so that's really the idea and I do use shorter fiber sticks so I didn't need that massive uh, height as well and you know look I've had the long sticks before and they're annoying and I always cut them down so um, but anyway so that's why I did that so I went on Canva then I, I shared my Canva account with them you can do that through a link that's safe and secure um, and you can also push a button so they can't change anything or copy anything um, hello Christine welcome darling uh, so yeah, so that's what I did with that. They gave me a quote after we were all happy and so on and I'd already seen a proof so they made a proof up before I sent any money um, and then they sent that and they uh, shared that with me through Instagram or uh, also on uh, email. Uh, because you know you can talk with lots of people so many different ways now. So it was like a private chat on Insta and that's basically how I started. 
after this video i will put the links in for the printer i used if anyone wants to um you know you talk to them and you can buy them in small batches so i couldn't afford to get thousands done at a go i literally wanted 250 of each box so i only ordered two boxes so they were very good in the way of doing a short run so it ended up costing me for these 750 dollars for 500 um, and I thought that was a very good price. They don't have an insert inside as well. It's just the box. Um, if you want the insert, it's more money. But, of course, depending on, you know, whether you're buying bigger batches or smaller, it will cost more or less money. But, anyway, that's basically, like I said, how my packaging went for anyone that wants to know. So, it worked out, I think, to be $1.75. I think that's what it works out of box. Um, and that's only because I chose to get only two designs. But if I had of um only got a hundred of each that would have been like two dollars fifty a box so you kind of got to work out you know can you afford to buy a bit more so my idea is i will buy them in batches of two different lots and i'll just do them at a time so then it's under a thousand dollars each time and each time i save enough money then i could do that and it's going to take me over a year but i can definitely do that oh thank you joe uh yeah it is uh, the packaging is beautiful and thank you i'm very happy with it um, look, I cried so many times, everyone, I'm going to be honest, because a big company or some, you know, maybe even small companies might have more money than me, but $750 to me was a lot of money. It really was. I don't have credit, so I had to save up all the money, um, you know, so I had to literally save up everything, and a lot of my money goes to the conference um, that I've set up. So, you know, I've spent a lot of money in that trying to educate people, but um because I just don't want small businesses to make the financial mistakes um, that I made at the start and then you're kind of scrambling from then on. Um, and for anyone that wants to know, I do have a Patreon, so you can join me over there if you want as well, and that does help support um, my channel as well. And we do give back. Um, each month I actually donate some money to Cancer Research out of the Patreon. So a big hi and a big um, thank you to the Patreons that are helping me do that because many of you may know my dad passed away from cancer less than a year ago and I nursed him at the end. It was very sad to see that. So I really wanted to put some money back into research. So through Patreon, um, like I said, a big shout out to everyone on there. Um, I'm definitely uh, going to be putting money back in, So which we're already doing now. So now that is a bit about the packaging. And now let's get and talk about candles. I get a lot of questions about candles um, this week. So I'm going to tell you the ones that I use um, just to hopefully help. Yeah, Christine, I thought it was a good price too, lovely. Um, because you know what, everybody, if you buy these in the white boxes, you know, from the supplies, there's lots of supplies around Australia and the US, Canada, the UK, anywhere you come from. I mean, um, the problem is though, you know, sometimes you can pay $2 in the white box and it's not packaged. But, you know, that's the old thing, isn't it? You know, if you say, for instance, we even pay $2 for a white box, most people are only going to buy 20 25 40 at a go um, because they can't afford to, to buy 500 in one go. And I understand that because that's exactly where I was. And like I said, honestly, I saved for nine months to be able to buy these. Um, so I know it sounds silly, but I just didn't have that money at that time. So hopefully um, I will as well. Oh, thank you, lovely. Thanks so much. Oh, you're sorry to hear that. Yeah, my beautiful dad, who was a big part um, of my business, did pass away um, last year at Christmas time. So um, very sad. I won't talk about it too much because it will make me cry. But, but um, yeah, and so and this one is named after him, which is Barry's daughter, because obviously I'm Barry's daughter and my dad's name was Barry. And my dad and I had designed this scent together. So this is a signature scent um, to my company. So it's very, very close to my heart, um, this one here. And it is one of my biggest sellers. I have had people ask me for the recipe, but obviously I don't give away the secret to that because that's uh, quite special to me. Um, so now, like I said, we're going to talk about candles as well. So now the wax that I do use is coconut soy from Pure Candles. But everybody, can I tell you, if you're using a cocoa soy or a coconut soy, you really do need to remember um, that the 
the temperature is key to getting that perfect and the smooth tops you will not get a smooth top um i'm trying to look for if i've got one here to show you which actually i do hold on i'll grab it and i'll show you so now this is the um the top can you see that i have not um used a heat gun over that that's basically how it come out um and th these are my new ones that are coming out soon uh, I, I actually i think they're on the website i've literally just put them on the website and this is the thing everybody you know temperature is absolute key when you're making things um for coconut soy even i used to use 464 if you're using that the same thing the temperature must be perfect and if you want to watch a video on 464 how to do it i suggest that you go back to candle science they have the best video that's how i learned to make candles um really professionally watching candle science um it came up on youtube and it's like a five minute video but very very good um, so anyway, like I said, I do use the coconut soy um, and I pour it at 43 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is, um, you know, in US Fahrenheit, but that's basically what I do as well. Oh, you've never tried to make candles. So number one, find the wax that works for you. Most people in Australia want, um, they don't want paraffins. They want a natural coconut or a coconut soy candle. So that's the one thing I suggest is use the right wax. I suggest natural because that way you can, you can, you know, you can sell to more people. And most people don't want it coloured. I used to make them coloured. Now I don't because most people generally don't want that. And when you put a colour in, that makes it more tricky to make as well because often you get the frosting and you can notice it on top. Also, um, I've gone from wood wicks to, to our cotton wicks and back and forward. I don't use wood wicks. Now, the only reason, and I love them, I used to use them all the time, but the only reason I've changed is that when you're using coconut soy, the wood wicks actually make um, the wax go brown. It stains it to a beige colour and people don't like that. So um, it's only once you light them, it stains the, um, it changes the wax to brown. So that's why I don't use the wood wicks now. Um, and now I sell wholesale. So lots of people have asked for cotton instead of wood. Although I myself, if I was going to make one for me, I would use wood because I personally like it. And I notice that it's, uh, oh, well, I feel that it's a cleaner burn. But that's just my opinion. You definitely need um, to test them and make sure that the wicks are perfect. This took me so much testing uh, to actually, you know, make sure you do them because uh, making candles is a science. You've got to pour slow so that you don't get the big holes in. This is so much involved. So I buy my wicks from Aussie Candle Supplies and they are a cotton wick as well. Uh, just so that everybody knows and in this jar which is a 400 gram jar I actually use two of the 7.5 um, cotton wicks from um, Aussie Candles so and I've tested it and it works well with this fragrance but you need to test all your fragrances because um, your fragrances and waxes will change the way the candle works um, and candles as we know you know we're lighting them so this fire so they can be dangerous so you really need to do testing and you need to write that testing down you need to keep a log of that because if somebody ever tried to sue you then you would know yeah i do have lots of videos lovely on how to make candles and test candles um, as well yeah and that's right joe and you know when you're actually doing these it's uh, i think joe's name is actually joy if i'm right um but, you know, the one thing, you know, that is super important is, you know, if you don't test it, you're not going to know. And if somebody complains, you don't know. So um, you just, you know, that's really important, everybody. Um, so please test your candles. Don't send them out as well. Correct. That's right, Joy. Yeah, I thought it was lovely. Um, you know, I know I say Joy because your name's Joe on here, but um, I was pretty sure it was. Um, I do remember lovely. So now that's what we're going to talk about that um, as well. And also now we're going to talk about price because I get asked all the time about price. Now I've learned so much about pricing. Let me tell you, everybody, I really have. When I started, can I tell you, when I started wholesale, so my diffusers, I used to sell them for $26. And I thought that was a pretty fair price but you've got to remember $26 means in wholesale you're only going to get half so that means I got $13 so really I made a couple dollars at best on a, on a diffuser 
so then I put them up to $35 honestly people don't care they will pay whether it's 35 26 if it's a good product they will pay so I suggest that you really do your homework um, with these and don't feel scared to your price up everybody the same as my candles um, with this as well yes um yes lovely who is asking about plain cotton wicks they do vary a lot uh so you definitely do need to and i think it's a cdn series i think that's what it is um let me have a look actually i've got one and i'll tell you what it is so these are the ones i use if you can see this nice and close so this is the one from aussie candles um so and i use two of those in the 400 gram jar um, from and this is the uh, pure candle supplies jar as well I think it's uh, oh I think it's Sienna I think the jars are called Sienna um, yeah so but that's the ones that I'm using and I'm very happy with those I've tested a few but they're the ones I like um, so far so anyway hopefully but you know do some testing pour nice and slow and you know there is actually a video i did a couple weeks ago which will show you how to test um as well it goes for 10 minutes so that's a good one to give you an idea um as well and i talk about pouring and things like that in um that as well so now as i said we were talking about prices so don't compare yourself to someone else because they might be using a cheaper material they might be using jars that they got at a cheaper price um, and also when I first started making diffusers I used them in black jars now I got a super good deal on the black jars that were less than two dollars a jar well now I can't get it for that it's um, a lot more than that so then you have to put your price up so you've got to be realistic and can I tell you no one is going to make a business uh, you're not going to be successful selling a diffuser for you know fifteen dollars um, you're not going to be successful because there's not enough money in that to to allow you to do other things so you've got to remember that say for instance you sell a diffuser for twenty dollars and you make two dollars that two dollars you're going to have to sell thousands of them before you can even start to get packaging because each month you've got uh, bills such as you know your website so for me you know I have my website I have my insurance I actually have two websites that I maintain insurance um, and then of course you know if you're on fair or wholesale then you've got the cost of packaging because I don't get paid from places like fair until about five weeks later um, so when I send the parcel out to somebody it takes four weeks before I get paid and then a few more days you know after that because um, you know it's not straight away so it's roughly four and a half to five weeks before I get money so you need backup money so with the prices just honestly what I would do is go into um, uh, yeah yeah that's right sorry you did see my diffuse um yeah I sell out of diffusers very fast lovely uh yeah definitely sell out of them um I can't keep them on the shelf but you know what oh why I'm interested in this I'm going to tell you this when I started uh, before I made diffusers I was buying mine from a big Australian company I won't say names I was paying $80 a diffuser so please everybody don't think 30 or 40 or 50 dollars is too much it is not too much money because that's honestly what i was paying um you know so um and diffusers last a long time look if your packaging is beautiful if everything looks beautiful you will sell them and we're going to talk about wholesale versus retail whether you should be in a shop online whatever and i'll talk about that in a minute as well because that was another question um but um, what was i talking about now yes yeah, so your prices so just make sure that i use a program now called inventora i did do a video with inventora and um they're very good so they actually paid me to do a video um but i would never take you know i would never actually allow someone to pay me unless i thought it was a good program so i tested it before i did the video and really liked it and i still use it so basically what you do is you log in all the costs that you pay for everything and then inventory will help you work out the price of your cost price which is called a cog um and that all basically what that means your cogs mean your prices so that's just really it's mean cro uh, cost of goods that's basically what that means so that means you know you would put in the wicks you make the wax the jar remember we've got labels if you've got a box you need to add that into your cost the fragrance that is going into it there's so many things colors i use using uv stabilizer that's 
also a cost so every single cost on the bottom there would be a label that i haven't put on here yet your safety label so you must add all of those in to get your cost and can I tell you, to make a candle like this, I don't make hardly any money on wholesale for my large candles. I only make a few dollars. Oh, you have got my diffusers. Thank you, lovely. I'm so glad that you do. And look, retail is fine for things, everybody. But when you're doing wholesale, you need to remember that, you know, you need to add in, um, you know, you need to add in a realistic cost. We need to make money. I mean... And the thing is, I mean, you can go to Kmart or one of those stores and get things cheap, but, you know, we've got to be realistic. We don't buy them. Kmart would buy 50000 of one product. We're not going to do that because we're not going to sell that many, obviously. So we're buying in some, such small batches, so your prices are going to differ a lot. But anyway, like I said, I won't go on about that, but make sure you get your price right because if every small creator charged a, you know, realistic price... I'm telling you, people would not even question it. They would pay it. But because someone's real cheap, someone's real expensive, then people don't know what's what's a right price for something um, as well. So now one thing that people ask me as well about are soap whips. Are they worth selling? Can I tell you, I'm actually going to get rid of my soap whips. Once they sell out, I won't be doing them. Um, we've got a big sale, like 40% off at the moment on my site. Now, they're beautiful to make, beautiful to use, but the market is so oversaturated with soap whips. I really don't sell a lot of them. Honestly, I don't make much money at all on soap whips. So I definitely will be getting out of selling them. And, I mean, you can see on TikTok and all of that, there's so many companies. And there's such um, there's a lot of companies that are dedicated just to soap whip. Um, and for me, I have to charge $24 for my large jar because... I can't make any money unless I do that and that's because I'm making them in small batches um, and there's not enough money in it for me uh, in Australia. So and our money is different in Australia to the US. Um, and so for anyone from the US, just to let you know, like our wages are much higher than the US but our houses are much more expensive. So the average home in Australia is about $650,000. Um, that's a normal three-bedroom home in Australia. So um, and that's in the outer suburbs, not the inner suburbs as well. So obviously we pay more money for things. So it's a little different, the price um, in Australia. So now lots of people ask me also about, you know, we've been asked a lot of questions about um, how much money would a shop actually take? Like what would a shop earn? So I'm going to talk about an outer suburbs, you know, not on the inner suburbs in the cities, but the outer suburbs. So generally, and I know a few people that work in stores and a few stores I've spoken to have told me this. Uh, so usually they earn $500 to $1,000 a day on a good day but generally 500 is normal to take a day remember you've got to take your electricity your gas everything else out of all of these prices as well um, so that's pretty normal but if you've got a Westfield store or a really big store sometimes they can take up to five thousand dollars a day at Christmas time um, but their rents are huge they are massive um, and I've worked in many Westfield stores so um, managing stores so I'll tell you that their rents can be very very high um, so yeah so that's a little bit about a store so and remember for instance if you're going to sell say we make candles and it's near Christmas and you're going to sell a thousand dollars a day in candles can you imagine how many of these you would have to make so if you've got your own store you also have to produce the product and sell it so that's very hard so a lot of stores, what they do is they might, um, on a Tuesday, for instance, they might close their store because it's a quiet day and that might be production day where they produce everything or they might close on a Tuesday and a Sunday um, and then that's when they're making things. If you're in the outer suburbs, that's what I would do. Um, and I definitely will be looking at having a store, but it will be at least a year or so away. Um because I can't even find the right store, to be honest, at the moment, and I can't afford one. So I'm going to have to really think about that, and we will have professional packaging on everything before we're in a store. So that's a little bit about owning a store. So I hope that that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. Also, going into a store, you need, um, you know, a bond. So a bond is a security bond. So basically you need about ten thousand dollars to go into a store with the bond and everything else and then you probably need another fifteen thousand to set it up 
So, you know, honestly, 20000 would be, I think, would be a start off uh, to get into a store. And I know that sounds unrealistic to a lot of us, but generally that's really what you need, everyone. So don't rush into it if you're a bit um, scared. But people definitely are going back to stores. I've done a few polls and my daughter also did one. So basically about 65% of people prefer to buy in a store. Yeah, Joy, it is a lot of money, lovely. Um, it's so much money. My daughter um, was looking at going into a store and it was just crazy. Oh, thank you, Christine. That is so nice. Yeah, I, look, I definitely want to have a store because, um, but we want to have it where it's a store that people go, oh my goodness, that is amazing. Let's go in. So, you know, we want to have it like pink with flowers and just a really beautiful look. So people even want to go to take a selfie picture because there's no good just having a boring store. You know, we want it to be amazing looking um so you know i just needs to be the right store and that's you know it can take years to find the right one so that's okay i'm happy to wait we'll just see what happens and i'm 50 years old so who knows what's going to happen i mean um you know we're just going to have to see aren't we so um now also we'll talk about as i said the process of getting your store if you want to get a store um Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do have faith that we will have one. But um, look, it's just going to take time. Um, honestly, it really is. And oh, while we're on this, before we talk about the next thing, I'm going to be honest here, everybody. Usually at Christmas time, I sell a lot. Um, last year, I was selling huge amounts online. I mean, you know, I was getting orders um, of $5,000 of bath bombs and more. Um, but I stopped doing labels where I would let them put their own label on. So now if someone buys my products, it has to be with my brand on it. So literally I've gone from earning that to earning a much smaller amount. I'm only on um, some months, like in October, I've sold nothing retail. Let me be honest on my line, on my website. Um, I've only sold wholesale. Uh, which is still good um, and obviously I get paid through YouTube and Patreon and that keeps me afloat but honestly if I didn't I would struggle online but lots of people are telling me that people are going back to shops and online is a lot harder now um, because you know remember that somebody can't go mm, you know and pick this up and smell that beautiful rose they can't smell that they you know it's your description and the pictures that are hopefully selling it so it's really hard. And also, can I tell you, everybody's telling me, these are my new bath bombs. People are saying that bath bombs are not selling very well at the moment. And I've noticed that too. Um, definitely bath bombs have gone down. Candles have gone up. Candles are always a big seller for me. Um, they always have been, even when I was at markets. A huge majority of my products were these. But if I'm honest at the moment, this month, I would say my biggest sellers are candles, bar soap, and diffusers um they're the, the three things that i sell um quite a lot of now as i said if you're going to a store so you need um your bonds you, you know uh, your security bond you need money to set up all the racks and make it beautiful often you've got to change the floor paint um and you you know if somebody else has been in that store you may need to fix the store a bit because they drill holes in the wall to put their own um things on the wall and so on sign writing you need and um, there's so many things um signs and i mean just it's massive what you actually need and then um i was speaking to a real estate during the week and he was saying in australia he said there's not enough properties to lease um you know for business he said because COVID has kind of slowed down and you know we're not all ordering online lots of people are trying to get a shop and he said they they're scurrying to get a shop because there's not many and in the town where I live, which is kind of like a touristy town, um, and, you know, lots of people live here, but it's also a touristy town. Lots of people have moved out here. There was one shop available, like just one um, out of all the shops here. Uh, and my daughter went for that shop. I don't think she got it. And many other people went for the same shop. So there's lots of people trying to um, get into a shop. So really hard to find the right shop at the moment. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'll tell you that that, like I said, that is really uh 
you know, important. Now also on, um, so I do, lots of you will know that I also sell wholesale, I sell on fair and I also sell on trade square. Um, and at the moment in Australia, we actually have floods. So we actually do have floods um, that are being crazy here, you know, and uh, they reckon it's like a once in 250 year occurrence in New South Wales and, and Victoria as well. And the problem is some of these parcels that I'm sending are taking four weeks to get somewhere. Um, and often when I'm trying to send to the next state, it's going to the top of Australia and back round again because they can't get through with the floods. So um, that's something that you've got to deal with on wholesale as well. When people complain they haven't got it, you do need to tell them what well, it's the floods, it's out of my control, it's, you know, I've tried my best to get it to you, but... Yeah, so th so they're things too. If you're in a store and you want to buy from other wholesalers, keep that in mind. That sometimes freighting um, is a problem. And for me, I have a turnaround time of five days. So if someone orders this candle today, I'm not going to be sending that out until probably up to five days later because um, I need time to you know get everything ready. And often when somebody buys something from me, like diffusers, I might have ran out and I have to make more as well yeah uh yeah no it's um yeah joy the floods have been really bad for deliveries and i have seen on vista print and companies like that they actually have a sign on theirs now to say due to the floods please note that um you know product times or sending times are going to be much much uh different as well and i have noticed as well when i ordered things a lot of them are getting held up in customs as well so the boxes i had that came very fast from the US. They also got held in customs. Um, so, yeah, so everything gets held. And you, you just got to deal with it. I mean, there's nothing we can do. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. But, yeah, so do remember everyone. And when you're buying from a small business, remember that, you know, they're not going to be making, I'm not going to make a 1,000 candles. Um, I might make 25 of each small one, and I might only make 10 big ones. That's generally what I do is make 5 or 10. Um, that I know will sell, but sometimes they don't and then you've got to sell them off cheaper. So it's kind of one of those tricky things, isn't it? You know, that we're all kind of in that boat of, you know, trying to sell our product, get everything happening, and sometimes it doesn't um, when it doesn't. So please, everyone, like I said before, don't, don't feel bad if your product is not selling. Um, because at the moment, online's really doing it tough. Many people are telling me um, that are online that they're really not selling very well online, but in person, in shops, they're selling very well. Uh, so, and I don't do markets anymore at all, everyone. I have thought about redoing it, but um, it ruins the product, and I just don't feel that that's where I want my designs to be. I want them to be more of a boutique kind of luxury one. So I won't be going back to markets as much as I sometimes think I might. I No, I won't be doing that. Um, I just have to promise myself not to do that and try and get a luxury brand out there. Um, but that's not saying markets are bad. They're very good for anyone that um, wants to get your name out. Definitely do a market. Um, I did them for a year and a half and they were very good. But between, you know, Patreon, YouTube and doing this and making videos, I, like I didn't have time um, to do them as well. What do I think about pop-up shops? I had a friend that worked in a pop-up shop and she said she did amazing. She did very, very well. It got her name out there and she said, and some of those people are buying online from her now after the pop-up shops finished. But, you know, look, with pop-up shops, the thing that I think is really important is you need to make sure that you're giving a flyer to every person, a business card, so that they have your details. Because say somebody comes in, they go, I love that candle, they buy it. They're not really going to look at my label at the bottom to get my name. Sometimes they don't do that. So you want to have some physical thing like a flyer or something to get them as well. Oh, yeah, things are very hard, aren't they? That. They're really, really hard. And I know lots of people are, are asking a lot of these different questions, but it's very hard. 
yeah look sometimes sometimes christine i have to say that um when you know we're talking about doing markets you have to be very confident really confident like i'm when i was young i was actually a very shy person but as you get older you just learn you know so i am quite confident to sell i know my product's amazing i'm very happy selling that but markets are just really really hard and you know look and this is the thing i think if you sell at a market it gets your name out there and it helps but you know with a business plan you need to know do you want this is look i'm going to say this and many people won't agree with me but this is my opinion i think you've got a couple things so number one if you want to be at a market that's great to get money at the end of the day i don't think it builds your brand that much but i do think it gives you that extra cash because people just splurge and if you can't afford to get a store definitely they buy it but if you want your store your product to be a boutique product or in a high market um, a market is not the go because if i went to a market and i was selling these for 36 dollars, people would be like nah i want to pay 20 because they want a bargain so um you know it's really hard i oh, know tammy uh, lots of us are very shy darling and i get it i look when i'm not doing this i'm just sitting in my lounge having a coffee what youtube i mean you know i'm not a party person i don't enjoy a lot of attention being on me i really don't but you sometimes like when i have the conference you just got to do it a market and a pop-up so often often what happens with a pop-up um store it's basically like a mini store within a big shopping center so whereas a market you know people often go to markets to get a bit of a bargain to get a walk around on a sunday you know they just want to chat they want to get out and just have a look what's out it's a great day um just to go out to a market um and even if you've got no money lots of people just go out with no money they just go out for lunch but if you're in a pop-up shop, generally people go to the shopping centre to buy stuff. Um, so, I look, if I'm going to be honest, I do think people would be better to be in a shop um, if they could afford to. If you can afford it and you have the money to go into a shop, that's what I would do. But before going into a shop, build your brand online on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all of those platforms. Use them all to build people so for me if i went into a shop on day one it would have been disaster um but you know because nobody knew me i can't drive people there as well so you know then that's the thing everybody you have to be able to drive people to your store um and when i say drive people it means you want people to love you trust you like your product and then when you open the store they're like boom i'm going to be there let me know when you're starting um, and I have people every day, honestly, every day that say to me, that message me and say, if you had a store, I would come tomorrow. Um, I would be there as well. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, lovely. Um, somebody is saying it's hard to build a brand online. You are 1 million percent right. Very, very difficult to build a brand. Very hard. Uh, do, uh, so pop-up shops it depends on the center so if if you're in a westfield center they might um, tell you this is what you've got to bring they will check to see that it's stable and safe for you to do it you need to be insured there's lots of things um in a pop-up shop so if you want to do that go and um so if you're in australia go to westfield store if you're another country go to whatever your big supermarket is and just ask them you know do you do pop-ups what's the cost and they will probably send you the paperwork so you can look at it um and understand it more but you know there's lots of other ways as i say to people you know um you know like if there's like a soaping guild a conference go to one of those you can advertise in them sometimes they have booths in those and remember it's not just soapers that are there you've got suppliers that are there and those suppliers get asked all the time do you know people in the industry that make a good candle and they will refer people as well oh you're home and it's your daughter's grand uh oh it's your daughter's birthday or your granddaughter's birthday well happy birthday kim to them don't worry you can watch me back anytime lovely i will save um this as well everybody and as i said i will put the links um for where i bought my packaging so that everybody can have a look and you can contact them 
and also with the company that I did for the packaging you don't need to hire a graphic artist to um you know to put that in a printable format because they'll do that for you that's a part of their pricing and there's a couple of different companies um so the one I used is called Omasib and there's also and that was I think they're based in Florida uh in the USA and there's also another company called um Printing Blue in Australia as well yeah that's right paypal will let you um charge people that way as well um and when i pay for any of my packaging i always pay through paypal because it is a secure uh website that's just personally what i like but it's up to anybody else um that way if something's wrong you can get your money back but as i said you know it's the first time using this company i was very happy with them uh, don't pay me to say this either everybody and make sure you understand what legals need to be on the back of your products everybody it's super super important um and you know the same as you'll see at the front you need to have certain things written on them at all times so please make sure that you understand what you need to do on them and you know look just keep going everyone you can't give up as well yeah markets are great kim to start with that's what i said they're very good to start with i did them most people will do them to get their name out and i still get people buying line that visited me at the market but um i've spent close to three years of just honestly uh, you know being really um always out there on social media so and look there's months everyone sometimes there's weeks or months that i don't sell anything retail um so you know like i said the whole of october i sold nothing retail um i did sell on my site wholesale but nothing retail so remember that sometimes it doesn't matter how much people know you it's really hard online it's very very hard and that's the honest truth everybody very hard oh thank you stacy thanks so much yeah i do love the boxes they are really really beautiful as well um oh you had your um oh you had everything hacked yeah everybody that's on social media you need to have um Oh, I can't think of what it's called. I do have it, which is the double authentication. So you need to have that so that if someone tries to hack your account, you can get it back. Um, so, yeah, so that's something, you know, you, you definitely need to have that added link, everybody, on your websites, which you can pop on there as well or on your social media. Um, so it means you need to code and many other things to get in so that hopefully it makes hacking hard. And, you know, if someone hacked my account, well, you just got to start from scratch. You've just got it. That's all you can do. I mean, you can't give up. You've just got to start again and try. But unfortunately, we're in the world of people stealing our information, aren't we? So you've got to just hold it a bit uh, tight as well. And also try Pinterest. Um, I've been on Pinterest lately um, and had a little bit of interest. So you never know. I mean, you just don't know everybody. Um, but anyway, I will go today. I think you've heard my annoying voice for long enough and I do need to um, stick some more stickers onto um, some of my packaging and get that off the ground. Anyway, bye everyone. Have an amazing day. See you in two weeks time. Bye.